Hey. So, yesterday I talked a bit about, you know, having met a really cool person and a conversation that we'd had about my work with, uh, effectively my private practice with one-to-one or one-to-two with families where I support parents in going into their backgrounds and their histories and their stories and working out what it is that is triggering them when their child does or says a certain thing or their teenager expresses a certain behavior or attitude and it just boils their blood and it makes them unable to unable to show up the way that they want to for their children and the way that their children need and so i i work as as many of you know and you can always just you know scroll down and have a look at some of the videos where i explain it in more depth that I work with people like this. And I had a a conversation with somebody who had said, do you know, I see, I see real implications for this in schools. And of course, I actually don't know, I should check whether this person knows that I used to be a teacher (laughs) and a middle leader in schools. And, And I really, really agree. And it set me off thinking. So what I do is I have you know, some form of inspiration, which is from reading something, watching something, the best inspiration ever. And again, I know how utterly blessed I am with this is meeting people, sharing ideas in real time through Zoom or in person. And, and then I go and I sit with it. Off and off I go to go do some more reading and then come back. And it just had me thinking about leadership and what is the difference between leadership and management? Because at the end of the day, this is what I was talking about the other day in a school setting. And it doesn't have to be a school setting, but you know, I was a former school teacher. This is this is my field. But there is no reason why this isn't applicable to all organizations and it ties in exactly with what I talk about with my in my one-to-one and one-to-two practice about stepping into your power as a leader in your family most of you if you see my videos on my posts there is a hashtag at the bottom and it's always hashtag lead with love hashtag lead with love because the days of leading with fear and coercion and bullying, they're gone. Anybody who tries those tactics just fails miserably because it turns out people don't respond very well to them. And the results that you get out of that within the family unit or or without in a company or an institution like a school or in the NHS where there are people who do degrees in NHS management it just doesn't work to bully people and to set up ridiculous targets that people can't achieve in the in the situation that they're in which i'm referring to here is you know it depends on where you teach if you teach in a poverty ridden ridden area your targets for your children should not be the same as the middle class school two miles away they should not i mean of course we need national an international accountability but within that you've got to have some sense I'm gonna get off that soapbox <laughs> because in terms of management and leadership this is what I was thinking of in our homes when we see breakdown when we see breakdown within the family ties and within these you know familial or parental bo- bonds it's because of management and coercion and almost always it comes down to fear the reason why a parent or a leader in the family say you know an aunt who has custody of children or or if there's two co-parents and and they have children living in a separate place the reason why they have defaulted to management of their children of their teenagers of the lives of the young people in their family unit is fear and love expressed through fear so fear they're not doing something I really really commonly hear they're just not reaching their potential you know they're going to leave my home one day and they're going to become an adult and you know they can't live like this because they'll just fail at everything they do and they'll never have a house they'll never have a family they they won't be able to keep down a job if they keep 
I think we can all recognize this, all of us. I mean, even even I have, you probably know that I home educate my three, well, world school, my three. My daughter's seven, and I still have wobbles <laughs> now. So I can only imagine what it would be like for somebody with a, you know, a 15-year-old who won't get up. You know, all these things that we think, but these are our things, which is why I do what I do, so that we can unpick our own personal triggers and where our fear is coming from in order to show up for our children in a way that helps them. So we as adults, loving mentors, grandparents, teachers, supporters, we create a situation where we have removed our baggage from the situation and we can support our young people to grow into who they are. They find their intrinsic motivation. They follow the thing that lights them up because they're not bogged down with Yes, I know that you want to live in the desert and I know that you want to experience different cultures, but can you just get a sensible job? I did that. And then I went to live in the desert and guess what fulfilled me the most? (laughs) And when we think of that in the context of management and leadership within, say, a school or a big institution or an organisation, doesn't matter what and we take people who have been effectively hired in the first place for a job teacher nurse administrator and then they are given you know they've been there for a while they excel massively so we we put them into a position of leadership and if they have excelled at their job in terms of the nuts and bolts you know running a meeting getting their data in on time you know the actual oh I'm thinking in Vietnamese now this is great like the the job the work of the job they can do it do you know what they need they might need probably need some support into growing into themselves as leaders and that means being able to show up for their team without their own stories, baggage, history, holding them back. I shared the example yesterday of the the middle leader who is kicking off in a meeting because their department funding has been cut because, well, it's being cut left, right and centre, certainly in the UK, <laughs> everything's being cut because COVID squeezed, you know, even private institutions, private enterprises are having their budget squeezed. And this person is kicking off because they have their family, their work family. Hopefully it's becoming really, really clear how I can see the, well, just it's straightforward application of what I do with families into a leadership scenario. It's very exciting. So their, their family, their bubble of this department is, is not getting enough and they are angry and they are triggered. And we have all sat at the awkward meeting where somebody has flipped and it's not been appropriate. And when we drill down, certainly when I drill down with my clients, these are the people who didn't have enough Cheerios growing up. These are the people who lived in scarcity. These are the people who now as leaders are just trying to do their best because they are good people and they are good people. And they're very good at their job. And what is holding them back from excelling in their leadership position, probably within their families, and certainly in this scenario, is their stories, their background. Because guess what? Everyone you hire for your job is first and foremost a human being. Second, they are part of their own family unit. You know, whether they're single or, or married or children or whatever, they are part of their own family. They came from somewhere. And then they are part of your organization. And if you are expecting them to show up and bump them up, if you are trying to elevate them without shoring up their foundation, they're gonna struggle. And some people will get over that with brute force, but there is massive application for inner child past story work in freeing your leaders to be the leaders that they want to be, that you deserve and they deserve. Thank you for listening. I hopefully that's that's some great ideas for you to think about as well.